In the previous video, we used uh, Newton's second law to figure out how long it would take a snowboarder to come to a stop on a flat surface. Well, now this time we will deal with the same snowboarder except going up a hill. The question asks, the snowboarder comes up to the base of a second hill, traveling at 17.0 meters per second. The hill is at an angle of 35 degrees to the horizontal, and the coefficient of kinetic friction between her skis and the snow is once again 0.185. We ask, how far up the second hill does she get before she comes to a stop? Well, the first part of our problem-solving process is always to draw a diagram showing the information we're given and the forces acting on the object, in this case, the snowboarder. So now we have our snowboarder going up a hill <clears throat> with an angle of 35 degrees to the horizontal with an initial speed of 17.0 meters per second and she stops somewhere on the hill with a final velocity of zero she has traveled a distance delta x up the hill and we want to find that delta x. Now this once again seems like a situation where we will be applying the kinematics equation like so where we know the final and initial velocities we want to find delta x and we must first find a the acceleration using Newton's second law. So let's draw the forces which are acting on the snowboarder. First off, we have the weight force, mg, and then we have the normal force, which is perpendicular to the surface, as always. And then we draw in the friction force, the friction force is going to be down the slope because she is traveling up the slope. The friction force is going to be down the slope. And we have a coefficient of kinetic friction of 0 0.185. So we have constructed a diagram showing all the information that we're given and drawing all the forces acting on the object. The next step is to create a coordinate system. And since we are once again on an incline, it is to our advantage to change the traditional Cartesian coordinate system so that x is no longer purely horizontal, but is instead up the ramp. She is initially traveling up the ramp, so we will call the positive x direction up the ramp. And then, as always, the y component must be perpendicular to the x component. But remember, that's the only requirement. We can change x and y as much as we want, as long as they remain perpendicular to each other. Now, having established that coordinate system, we ask ourselves the question. Given this coordinate system, do any of the forces need to be broken up into components? And the answer to that question is yes. The weight force can be broken up into two components. Given our new definition of X and Y. So the weight force has a component perpendicular to the slope opposing the normal force and an x component which is actually down the slope. So you see the x component of the weight force is in the same direction as the friction force. So now we write out formulas for these components using the fact that they are perpendicular to each other and that this angle right here between the weight force and the y component is the same as the angle of the incline 35 degrees. We will begin with the sine function where the sine of 35 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite this 35 degree angle is the x component. So that is Wx and the hypotenuse is the weight force mg 
And so that gives us a formula for the X component of the weight force, mg sine 35. Going to the cosine function, the cosine of 35 is the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. And in this case, it is the Y component that is adjacent to the 35 degree angle. And once again, the weight force mg is the hypotenuse. So this gives us a formula for the Y component, mg cosine 35. So we have determined that one of the forces needs to be broken up into components. And we have written out formulas for those components. And now we proceed to our final step to use Newton's second law to figure out what we need to find. In this case, what we need to find is the acceleration. And in this case, our acceleration is going to be down the slope, opposing motion and slowing us down. Now that is going to be the acceleration in the x direction. As we have defined the x direction, it's going to be down the slope. <clears throat> That's in the negative x direction. The acceleration in the y direction is going to be zero because the way that we have defined the y direction, the snowboarder is not rising up off the slope or sinking down into it, so her acceleration in the y direction is zero. So when we go to Newton's second law, Remember that due to the vector nature of force and acceleration, we really have two equations with Newton's second law, one for the x forces and one for the y forces. And since the acceleration in the y direction is zero, we can say that those y forces are in equilibrium. Now we want to find this acceleration right here. So we will first take a look at this x equation. There are two forces in the x direction, the x component of the weight force and the friction force. Now they are both down the slope and in our coordinate system, down the slope is negative. So when we add up our forces, this time both of them will be negative because both of them oppose motion. Well, now we turn to the formula for the friction force, which is, of course, Buk times the normal force. So once again, this has become an exercise in finding the normal force before we can find the friction force. So we turn here to the second equation and think about the two y forces, the normal force, which is in the positive y direction, and the y component of the weight force, which is in the negative y direction. So we add them up like so. Normal force up, positive. Y component of the weight force down, negative. And they must add up to zero. And the only way this can work is if the normal force equals the Y component of the weight force. And so the normal force equals mg cosine 35. Now we can plug in our formula for the x component of the weight force here and plug in the y component of the weight force as the normal force. And we're going to get a very long equation, so we need to allow plenty of space. Wx is going to be mg sine 35 with a negative sign in front of it. And then we substitute 
this for the normal force. And then we put down the other side of the equation. Now, as we've seen so many times before, the mass is going to cancel. Mass does not control this acceleration. And so we are left with AX equals minus G sine 35 minus mu K times G cosine 35. And that calculates out to be negative 7.11 meters per second squared. So now we have the acceleration. Notice it's a very large acceleration, much larger than the accelerations that we've seen in all of our examples. This large acceleration is due to the fact that now we have two forces working against motion. Going down the hill, the weight force and the friction force were opposing each other, but going up the hill, they are working together. And in working together, they're going to produce a very large negative acceleration. And now it's a matter of going to our kinematics equation and substituting in the numbers. Her final velocity is 0. The initial velocity is 17.0. The acceleration is negative 7.11. That negative sign is really important. Right, calculating it out, we get 289 minus 14.22 delta x. We take this over here, and it becomes positive. That gives us 14.22 delta x equals 289, and that leads to a delta x of 20.3 meters. So she gets 20.3 meters up the slope before coming to a stop. That's not very far, considering some of the other situations we've dealt with. But again, that's a reflection of that high acceleration because we've got two forces working against us. Now, just because we can, let's calculate how long it takes for her to go up the slope. What is the time it takes? Because we calculated the time to go down the first hill. Let's calculate the time to go up this second hill. And we can simply use the first kinematics equation for that purpose. Final velocity is 0. Initial velocity is 17.0. The acceleration is minus 7.11. Again, that minus sign is very important. And that leads us to a time of 2.39 seconds to go up the hill. A very short period of time, much shorter than the times that we've seen. Again, this is a reflection of the large acceleration caused by two forces working against our motion this time. So then we're not going to go very far up the hill, and it's not going to take us very long to come to a stop. So she travels a distance of 20.3 meters up the hill, and it takes her 2.39 seconds to come to a stop.